In this video, what we're going to do is go over how to get the information that's necessary for the Excel sheet for this week. For this week, what you're going to be doing is filling out and completing the Excel sheet number 38 three times, where what you're going to be doing is evaluating corporate stocks, three different stocks, where you're going to be identifying the various basics as far as the name and where it's traded and things like that, what kind of dividend information, and what kind of financial performance is there. So you're going to be doing that three times for three different companies. Now how do you get the information? First of all, you want to go to finance.yahoo.com. Again, we'll make sure that you have the uh, link which is in the assignment instructions in Canvas. You go to this and you'll be doing all of your investigation here. Now first of all, about the different stock markets. Everybody th talks about the Dow. All right, The Dow 30. The Dow Jones Industrial Average. This is not a stock market. It's just a number where what they do is they have 30 companies. Here are the components. 30 companies as a part of that that gives an idea as far as what's happening with the economy. And you can see the companies that are, the 30 companies that are listed there. American Express, Nike, Apple, Home Depot, McDonald's, Visa, Johnson & Johnson, Pfizer. In other words, you look at this, it's a cross-section of industries here in the United States. You have communications, you have computers, you have pharmaceuticals, um, other technology, um, Boeing, you know, airplanes. I mean, there's all kinds of different technologies and different uh, companies that are part of that that kind of span the various industries here in the United States. And these are all large cap companies, large capitalization, in other words, greater than $30 billion. And so there's only 30 companies that are a part of the Dow 30. The NASDAQ is a market, it's a secondary market. There's something like 7,000 different companies that are listed on the NASDAQ, including, including the 30 that are listed on the Dow. And again, what they do is you look at some of the some of the companies that are part of the NASDAQ. There's some companies here that you may have heard of, maybe that you haven't. The thing is, there's all these various companies that trade over the counter, and that's what the NASDAQ is really all about. It's kind of an average of all of that. Then you have the Standard & Poor's 500. The Standard & Poor's 500 is 500 large cap companies and again, some of them will be the, um, uh, the ones that are listed in the Dow that give you an idea as far as what's happening with the economy. The various companies that are listed on the Standard & Poor's, you'll see some of these big companies, you know, 3M and Abbott and Adobe. Uh, let's see. I think there was Aetna in here. Nope, I don't see Aetna in there. American Airlines, Amgen, so you can see that there's Apple, you can see that there are a lot of major companies that are part of the Standard & Poor's 500. Now what this does, this thing will show is, let's say for the Standard & Poor's 500, it's showing what the last close was. Right now that I'm doing this, it's about 4.30 in the afternoon, so the markets are all closed. Uh, so it closed at this right here. If you're looking at the Dow, the Dow closed at this. It was up 469 points, about two and a quarter percent. This chart right here shows the pricing throughout the day, where it opened and then where it closed. You can see that it goes up and down throughout the day. If you look at the past month, you can see the Dow has dropped tremendously. It was at, at the beginning of the month 26,000. Now it's 21,000 for the year. A year ago, it was 26,000. Now it's 21,000. So this is giving you an idea as far as what's actually happening in the economy in total. And so that's what the Dow, the NASDAQ, and the Standard & Poor's is all about. Now one of the things that you're going to be doing is looking at three different stocks and getting the information to complete sheet number 38 three times, the way you do that. Let's say that you're looking for a company, let's say it's Apple. 
okay let's see if I can spell it right there's Apple Incorporated so let's see what Apple's doing today it closed at 244.9 all right it was up four points so in other words it opened at uh, 240 okay you can see it opened at 240.34 closed at 244.39 today after hours what that means is there's um, there's speculation as far as what's happening with that stock so there's some trading that's going on in the background that's not actually on the market but it's called futures and so that's what's happening there you can see some of the information here market capitalization over a trillion dollars so it's definitely a large cap price to earnings ratio is 19.45 in other words they're taking the price compared to the earnings per share and it comes up with 19 remember in the last video we said that anything over 20 is saying okay we're very uh, optimistic about this firm under 20 is uh, we're not quite as optimistic the lower it is as far as the number is concerned the less optimistic they are the higher it is as far as the number is concerned the more optimistic they are and I'll show you some other stuff here in just a minute you can see the dividend yield which is you know about one and a quarter percent as far as the dividend yield they're not giving back that much money as far as their profits are concerned they paid a dividend back in in uh, in February. The ex dividend date was February seven. I don't know what the actual uh, pay date was. It doesn't show that right here. You can see that it's a fair value. Okay, showing you that. Looking at what's happened, oh, say over the past month. Over the past month, opened up around two ninety nine. Now it's two forty four. At its low point, it was about two hundred and fifteen okay back on March 23rd if you had bought it at that point there you would have made uh, 30 bucks per share so far so you can see some of the information here more information that you need you'll need to know about the financials in the financials now see this is saying that all numbers are in thousands okay so add another three zeros to each of these Total revenue was 200 and for as of uh, September 2019, their year end then, $260 billion as far as their revenue is concerned. You go through here, here's their cost of goods. You go through their research and development, operating expenses, interest expense. In other words, they have some bonds that are outstanding, loans that are outstanding, they're having to pay interest on it. Income before tax, they paid 10 billion dollars in taxes and then their net income is 55 billion dollars for the year now you can see that that was down a little bit from the previous year see this is September 2018 previous year their net income was 59 billion but you can see that over the years they're growing alright their basic earnings per share see several years ago it was 8 now it's around 12 so their earnings per share is growing if you look at the analysis this is saying okay so here's some earnings estimates from various analysts and experts and things like that one of the things to look at is this recommended recommendation trends as of April this year all right there are six that are saying, okay, hold. They're saying, okay, if you have Apple, just hold it. 21 who are saying, yeah, this is fairly a good buy. And 11 saying, this is a strong buy. Definitely buy it. So you can see that there's going to be some recommendation trends as far as experts and brokers that are out there as far as what it is that they're saying. And you can see some of the other things that are out there as far as some of the analysis and information. So you can see where you want to go when you look up a particular stock. Here's the price. Go back to the summary. Market capitalization, price earnings ratio, the earnings per share, the earnings dates, the dividend yield, what's been happening over time, 
the financials, what's happening as far as their financial statements are concerned, the analysis as far as, okay, so is this something we want to buy or not? What kind of estimates do we have as far as their earnings per share and things like that? So going back to here, let's say we want to just think about, well, let's look at Tesla. Tesla. Tesla for the day is down. Start of the day, oh, let's see, around $478, down to about $454 with the close. You can see market cap, $83 billion, so it's large cap. Earnings per share is negative. They're losing money. You can see they have not paid any dividends because they ain't making any money. If you look at what's happened over the past month with Tesla, a month ago, it was at $777 a share. Now it's $454. If you bought Tesla a month ago, you will have lost over 300 bucks per share. Okay, about 40% or so. Financials. Year ending 1231. They had revenue. They've had sales of $24 billion. And you can see that's grown over the past several years quite a bit. Net income. They've lost $862 million. $862 million. You can see they haven't made a profit yet as far as their net income is concerned, which is why they're not paying any, uh, paying any dividends. If you look at the analysis, some people saying, oh, it's a strong buy and a buy, hold. Some are saying it's over, underperforming, and some are saying, ah, you probably need to sell. The thing is, it's based on the price. Right now, at $454 a share, you can see what the trends are. Back in March, when it was trading for around $700 a share, you can see there were some definite differences as far as the trends are concerned. So these are some of the things that you need to do as far as finding some stocks that you might want to think about and complete for that, um, for that sheet. Let's see, let's try another one. Let's say it's uh, Home Depot. Home Depot. Here's Home Depot right here. Let's see what's happening with them. Today it closed at $181 a share. You can see it uh, opened up at $174, went up a few points. $194 billion, large market cap. Earnings per share, $10 a share. Price earnings, $17. So they're not quite as, the, the analysts aren't quite as strong on it as far as the people who are actually buying it. Dividend yield, 3.36%. So you're making more as far as the dividends are concerned on Home Depot than you are on Apple. Say it's a fair value. Let's look at the analysis. What are the experts saying? Ooh, strong buy. Buy and hold. So they're saying at this price, at $181, that's what you want to do. You want to buy this one. That's what they're saying here. Uh, here's their financials. Year ending January 31, $110 billion in sales. Net income, $11 billion. So it's really kind of interesting to see what it is that they're earning here. All right. Um, let's go back to... Let's look at uh, Amazon. You want to buy a share of Amazon? Be ready to pay almost $2,000 per share. All right, they're growing like crazy. They were up 11 points, half a percent, $955 billion as far as their market cap, but they're not paying dividends. Let's see what's happened over the past month with Amazon. Over the past month, they started out at 1975. They're ending up right now at 1918, so they haven't lost that much, not as much as a lot of the others. Over the past year, a year ago, uh, it was selling for 1837. If you had, had held on to it, you would have made 100 bucks a share, almost 100 bucks a share. So you can see some of the things that you can do and some of the companies that you can look up. So use this sheet. You see the information here. Use that to evaluate three different corporate stocks, your choices as far as what it is that you'd use. 
you have questions, give me a shout.